Less than a year ago, Stephanie Spore was celebrating the engagement of her son, Zachary. Nicholas is Zachary's brother. You know, it was unfathomable that she wouldn't make it to the wedding. You know, it was in June. Stephanie, who was 64 when she died, suffered from lupus. Nicholas says the autoimmune disease was under control, but when she started having breathing problems, she was admitted to a Chicago area hospital. Within weeks, she contracted Canada Oris. And the doctors asked for a family meeting, and it was four or five of us, and um, 13 doctors. And that's when we knew kind of it was bad. It was bad. Instead of attending her son's June wedding, Stephanie watched him take his vows in a sterile hospital room. That's the one time she cried after she had found out that she wasn't going to make it, uh, was, at the, was at the wedding. A few days later, Stephanie died. The trumpets have been sounding for some time that this is a real problem. Dr. Mark Rupp, chief of infectious diseases at Nebraska Medicine, says the overuse of antibiotics and antifungals leaves fewer treatment options. It has the unfortunate capacity of being very, very resistant to some of our antifungals, and it also has a capacity to contaminate the environment and persist in the environment. So it's kind of a double whammy in the infection control world. Nebraska Medicine is at the forefront of infection control and training. It has one of only nine biocontainment units in the U.S., which has been used to treat patients quarantined with Ebola. Now it's playing offense against Candida auris and other highly contagious germs. Candida auris can quickly spread from room to room on people, clothing, and even lunch trays. The medical center has enhanced infection control training and surveillance to keep it contained. We're doing what's called a seven-step cleaning process. When patients who have been treated for highly infectious illnesses are discharged, the human housekeepers are followed by a cleaning robot that zaps germs. And what is the UV light in? It's an ultraviolet C light that pulsates uh, and it removes microorganisms, bacteria off of surfaces. Should every hospital in America have one of these? They should. They Why? should have several. When you read the headlines that this is a mysterious and a dangerous drug-resistant fungus, should Americans be alarmed? Um, I think they should be aware, they should be concerned, they should be engaged. For the Spore family, Canada Oris stole their chance to fully comfort Stephanie in her last days. I can't imagine how sh what she was feeling at the time, like looking at everybody with gowns and, and rubber gloves. The day she passed when they turned off the machines, they said, you can take your gloves off if you want to touch her. It was nice to be able to, to do that. Dr. Rupp told me that families should ask the hospital about infection control protocols and most importantly, keep their eyes open to make sure personnel wash hands each time they enter the room or touch objects that may be contaminated. He also recommends a Medicare website called Hospital Compare that ranks hospital quality. Stephanie son Nicholas told us the hospital that treated her did everything it could. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York.